Hi, everybody. It's Coach Vela here with the amazing Angela Blaha, who was one of our amazing providers here at the Empath Toolbox. We're going to pick her brain, ask her many questions, and just to kind of give you guys an idea of what she has to offer those of you who want to chat with her, I promise you will not be disappointed. She has been my mentor for about three years now, and we have done amazing things together. Love the word amazing because everything comes under Angela is amazing. <laughs> Get to know her a little bit today. She mm -hmm. is hanging out with us from the Midwest, and she will be sharing many, many of her offerings with you. She does work remotely with clients, and she also has uh, taken us on such amazing trips uh, around the world. So I'm going to hand it over to Angela so she can introduce herself, let us know a little bit about her and the things that she is doing right now. Well, thank you, Coach Belia. I just love chatting with you, as you know. So I'm Angela. Um, I'm a soul seer. Literally, I could see souls, uh, what happens with the soul from its inception all the way through, well, future, future eons. Um, I'm also a conscious disruptor because I believe that we need to disrupt our consciousness in order to move forward. Um, and I'm a, I heal betrayals. So some of the deepest wounds that we have um, are wounds of betrayal. And, and I heal them at a soul level, not just a human consciousness level, but literally at a soul level. So that's a little bit about who I am. Um, some of the offerings that I do have right now are the um, soul mentoring, which is like people just love that. I've changed it to be on Voxer. And so we work five days a week and you can ask all kinds of questions and it's like a 30 day program. Um, the other thing that that is like, super hot and heavy in my consciousness is uh in may we're going back to peru but it's not just a not just any kind of a little trip it's a it's a, a portal activation trip and so we it is a mission kind of a like purposeful like very purposeful we're not there just to see the sites uh we will be activating portals which we are working on right now um in the Midwest here because we have to connect some new portals to the new universal chakras and they're, they've been hidden for a long time. So not to get too far out there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, that's the mission of that trip. So those are two super exciting things that I love doing. Yeah. I love how you say it's not just any little trip because it's not like any of your trips are little. They've always yeah. been very impactful for myself and for the many people that you have had also the privilege to work with. So I can attest firsthand that they are transformational. Um, she literally takes us on a field trip and it's all pretty and nice and everything. But as she mentioned, she is helping heal deep wounds. And with that comes a lot of emotions and processing. And I always like to call your work expedited healing. Because even though sometimes it hurts like hell, and I'll be honest with you, you're just never the same after a session with Angela, after a trip. I've had the privilege of doing retreats with you, and I can tell you that I've always wanted more. Um, the beauty about the work that you do, Angela, is that it's totally sustainable. I, for one, are super. I am super grateful because everything you've taught me has been sustainable. I remember that when you would teach me things and I would ask you to throw me a bone and you'd look at me and roll your eyes like, figure it out yourself. You can, you guys, you can do this. Um, and it's funny because at one point I was like, oh, why doesn't you just tell me? But I love, love, love that you never instilled any belief systems in me, mm -hmm. that you always allowed me to figure it out by myself. And even though, you know, you would roll your eyes at me and I'd be like, just tell me, had you not done that, you would have enabled me. So that's something that I want to make sure people know about you is that you will definitely help us with a roadmap, but it's us, it's up to us to do all the work. So, and literally even with all the trips, right, that are super transformational, I want to go back and ask you a little bit about, you shared the universal chakras. And mm -hmm. the reason why I ask is because when I went to go visit you at a retreat, you had mentioned that a lot of the chakra systems and the way that people see them are going to change. So can you touch a little bit about that and what that means, please? Yes. Yeah, so we have actually ascended through um, the 13th chakra. And after that, there's a, there's a, the 13th chakra is a Christed consciousness field. Like it's like, if you think about God, like that is the field of this level of consciousness beyond that, it moves into different kinds of chakras and like creation kinds of chakras. But right now we're, we're working with chakras, you know, the, the earth chakra, 
well, we can't count the earth chakra in as our own personal chakras because that's the earth chakra. <laughs> it belongs to the earth. It doesn't belong to us. We can access it or we can tap into it, but it doesn't really do us much good. Our chakras um, are, are like one through 12. Um, and we have ascended through all of them. And so now we're connecting. We, you, you have to, here's how chakra, here's how ascension works. You have to clear out your own, um, your own karmic ties, your own belief systems, your own emotions, your own, like all of that in every single dimension. And then once you bring back those soul pieces, you sort of create this channel, I want to call it. And it's where all of the soul pieces come and it create and it moves into a, a, a whole, a wholeness kind of component. But you have to clear those. You have to clear each one of your souls on every dimension. So you have to go all the way through the 12th dimension and bring them all back. And then you create this sort of column effect and it goes all the way through the 13th. That's how, you, that's how ascension is. We have these belief systems that say we have to ascend as a group. You know, we're thinking every, we have to bring all of our family with us. No, that's not how ascension works. You ascend as a group soul through your dimensions. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. And I'm sure we're going to pick your brain a little bit more because the goal is to meet with you once a month and kind of just hang out and say, hey, what's going on? And I know you have your amazing cosmic forecast coming. And mm. I know many people used to look forward to that. So it's not like a horoscope for the week or whatever. But can you talk a little more about your cosmic forecast so we can get all these people to sign up for this amazing offering, this free offering that you have for us all? Yeah, so it's sort of like a podcast. I have it everywhere on all, all social medias. It's on my uh, email list as well. You get it first if you're on the email list. What I do is I communicate with the cosmos and look at, you know, like all the astrological things that are happening. Um, but I take it a step further and, and I ask, you know, like, like right now we're in a, a retrograde or towards the end of this weekend, we'll be in a retrograde. And so I ask Mars and I say, okay, Mars, how can people harmonize with your energy so that we're not causing any more pain and suffering here on earth? You know, that we don't have any more traumas. We don't have any more of this kind of stuff that we have to heal up. And then they give me advice <laughs> and I put that into the cosmic forecast. <laughs> so it's literally, I communicate with the cosmos and I give examples of how you can work with it. So. Yeah, I love it. And I know that sometimes even though you talk about, hey, it's going to be kind of rocky, you never make it like it's an excuse to like fall behind or yeah. not heal or whatever. It's kind of like, hey, this is what's happening. Get ready. Like do what you got to do. And it's funny because a lot of I remember that you had made a statement one time years ago. And you have said, Velia, right now, everything energetically is a lot faster than it was before. Mm -hmm. And pain and suffering are optional. And when you said that, I remember it was just kind of stuck in my head. I'm like, what does she mean by that? You know, and I remember the trip we went to Ireland. And I want to share a little testimony because from that, I've grown so much in what I teach my clients as well. Um, when you did take us to this trip in Ireland, you had mentioned that many of us were going to pick up different aspects of ourselves. So I'm going to ask you to share a little more about what that is. Um, while people were picking up these different aspects and we're there healing the land, we're going to talk more about a little, a little bit more about portals and what that means to people um, and how you can interpret like what we can do to help in that effort, even if we don't get to go on these trips. But you had mentioned that it was uh, optional and a lot of people on that trip got really sick. I remember it was cold and it was windy, whatever. And a lot of us were okay. People were feeling the symptoms of a past life death of sorts. There is one individual I remember her arm was hurting mm -hmm. and I'm nosy sitting on the bus with Angela because I get all the Angela time I can possibly get and I'm picking her brain like what's happening what's this what's that and that's when you mentioned to me like Vela, it's okay to heal a past wounds because the cell the body the cells have memory and even though it's a new life we're still healing up a lot of old wounds mm -hmm. and you said you don't have to feel the pain Vela, if you don't want to you could just ask for it to be revealed to you and heal it up. So that's when you had mentioned pain being optional and it worked. It's so true. I did not get sick or have any pains. And I kept saying, whatever I'm here to pick up, I'm going to pick up whatever I'm here to drop off. I'm going to drop off. So the way you kind of gave me cliff notes to things I thought was super, super exciting because from that we can all, even though we want to make excuses and it gets hard and, you know, sometimes it is a little painful. We can literally like 
close up the time that we will be experiencing any discomfort. So I want to go ahead and ask you about your DNA activations for star seeds because I had the privilege of taking that class with you, which was freaking amazing. I use it now in my practice and when I help with cacao ceremonies, bringing in the quantum and activating star seeds. So talk a little more about that because I think that's a service that a lot of people can benefit from. So we have lots of well, what science calls junk DNA, it's not actually junk, it's just inactive DNA. And when we, when we're working on ascension, like I'm here to serve ascension, I'm not necessarily here to serve humanity, which is why I don't spread, I don't, I don't teach my belief systems, I give you nuggets, and then you get to figure out what's your belief system and what isn't your belief system, right? And so, and so when we're activating our star self, like we all come from a star system, if you want to believe that or not, but it's true, we all come from someplace else in the universe. Um, even our DNA actually matches all the DNA in the universe. So, you know, it's reasonable, right? So when we're when we do the DNA activation, we're activating those parts of us that we have forgotten, um, that are probably off planet lifetimes. It helps you to remember like your vastness. It also helps you to remember how big you are as a being. It also helps you remember your power. Like you're very, very powerful. And I think that that's, again, like, like your example of in Ireland with the lady who had pain, like she wasn't in her power. Like when we're powerful, we demand things of our body. We demand things of our emotions. We demand, you know, like that's the whole concept of demanding I think for me is that I'm demanding my power I'm demanding my body to do what I want it to do we don't have to have pain and suffering none of us have to have pain at all we don't have to have viruses attack us we don't have to have like last year about this time I went and cracked open my knee because I was doing something nice for my husband but I wasn't watching what I was doing and it was a deep deep cut and I was like, okay, this has to heal overnight and we're going to do it right now. So um, literally I used my power and healed it up. I went in the next day to get a tetanus shot. And she's like, oh, I got to, I have to, we have to put stitches in that. I said, well, if you can pop that thing open, you can have, you can put stitches in it. And she couldn't pop it open. She tried three different times. I was like, okay, I think you're done. Cause that really, <laughs> you're causing me some pain here. <laughs> I don't really do pain. And, and she was like, flabbergasted you know and I was like I just demanded it to heal because that's who I am so when we're in our power though we don't have to have these um even when we're activating our own DNA like we don't have to have suffering like that, that's a whole belief system in itself and you can believe in it or not I personally don't believe in it and so yeah activating the DNA particularly off-planet DNA gives us a big perspective it changes our mind, the way that we think, the way that we feel about ourselves, um, and the way that we see. We can. Here's the one thing I've noticed with activation of cosmic energies or cosmic DNA is that we don't necessarily follow the written path. We don't buy into the agendas very well. We don't like. We're not the sheep following along when we have activated DNA. Very true. Very true. And I would love for one day for us to expand on that information because it's just it's mind blowing. But I love how you said that, like, we just kind of know something's wrong we know exactly what it is. And maybe we don't want to go out there and like dismantle stuff, but we're just not convinced about the information that we're being received. So that we're receiving, but here's what I love that you do always challenge us. And one thing that was super impactful in one of your DNA healings, when I went to go visit you to do this retreat is that you had activated, there was a few of us there at this um, intimate retreat, and you did do the activation uh, for the star seeds. And I remember that something started healing up because my left foot started heating up and it wasn't painful or anything. And I was just getting to know Angela. So I didn't want to sound a little too weird, but I'm like, okay, my left foot is really heating up. What's going on? So I remember you're teaching us things about consciousness, about dimensions, about ascensions. And I'm like, hey, um, my left uh, foot is heating up. Like, can you tell me what that is? And because you have the amazing ability to be able to tap into the soul, you, she's she's pretty much like the messenger. And she's like, mm, how do I want to share this with you? How do I tell you? She goes, well, in a past life, a male life, 
you were um, experimenting on yourself. And it was a some experiment where I guess I pulled my limbs apart. And she kind of looked at me and I looked at her. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, so it was an immediate like, yes, there was no hesitation. Like, I don't know. I don't believe it. But because we're referring to sometimes we kind of don't believe things and sometimes we do, you'll find that the things that Angela teaches are very much aligned with the questions that you've had because she does get to tap into your energy, right? And current, past, present, future, all that good stuff and kind of helps you navigate the things that you probably already know for yourself, but you kind of just need to double check or need that confirmation. Um, And for me, it was so in alignment because I have always guinea pigged on myself before I tell anybody anything like now. I bring you to my people and everybody else that I know is going to benefit from your services because of the amazing work you've done with me and you continue to do with me and how I've grown just by you allowing me to think what I need to think and allowing me to process whatever emotions that came. So DNA activations, I cannot wait for you to hold another class or seminar or something. And we're probably going to have to fly you back in over here to California to to do some of the amazing work that you do, even though you do everything remotely. (laughs) Yeah. as well but I'd love to see your face in person and everybody yeah, it's so much more fun yeah, so much more fun <laughs> for sure um you have mentioned portals mm-hmm. um portals are everywhere I know that you have you came to the desert um a couple years ago and we kind of experimented the land kind of checked it out and figured out whether some dense energy was some higher energy and you help kind of clear this land and you do that in your trip can you tell us more or less what it is you do in in regards to healing the land and clearing space and how that helps open up things for humanity? Well, humans have been very reckless. I'm just going to be blunt here. They've been very, very reckless with their uh, experimentation in the mystical or the magical or dimensions or everything. Like they're, they're very, very reckless in their experimentation. And this is a great place to experiment. I'm not saying we shouldn't. (laughs) What I'm saying is when you're, when you're experimenting um, and I love portals because it brings energies in and I'm very cosmic in my own energy. And so I like bringing other energies here to help us like to, to help heal the land. Like um, years ago, I remember when I first started doing um, healings, and um, clearings and those kinds of things. Like I could feel all the anguish that the earth was actually holding from wars, from uh, rapes, from, you know, pillages, from all those kinds of things. Like I could feel that stuff. And I was like, oh gosh, how can I help you? Because, you know, if I can feel it, other people can probably feel it. And we're just going to continue on that path. If we can feel it, if we're sitting in that energy, we're going to continue on that path. And I'm, I'm here for Ascension. And so we're, we need to clean this up. And so the earth actually taught me mostly how to heal it. So, and it, the earth heals by its own natural abilities. So upside down tornadoes, um, like I would be showing, just create an upside down tornado with your energy and leave it sit here and it'll suck up all this other energy and move it out into the cosmic or wherever it was directed to go. And then it would be healed up. Or it would just transform within the tornado and it would just disintegrate. Um, And so, you know, there's all those kinds of tools, all kinds of tools that we can use. Um, And so, but portals bring in energy. So I used to clean up a lot of energy. I try not to do that unless I have to anymore because it's kind of boring. For me, it's (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it's great for other people. Like they're here for that kind of thing. I just had to remember how to do it so that I could teach others or activate others. That's pretty much what I did. Um, but portals bring in energy. And right now we're in this, um, w- well, we're on a time crunch for Ascension because between 2023 and 2027, there will be a DNA change. And we ha- like we have to get everything aligned for that to support humans. Otherwise, who knows what will happen, but it'll probably be a wiping again. But, and I don't mean that in to make people afraid. I just, you know, we need to be ready. And so there's this time crunch that probably a good portion of us feel or we sense it, but we don't know really know what to do. Right. And so uh, there's a crew of us uh, that have gotten together here in the Midwest that are actually um, connecting a portal to the Midwest because this is, a new chakra, it's bringing in the 13th humanoid, that's a whole different subject, but 
it's bringing in the 13th humanoid and that the DNA change is this new being of human um, for these kids to be born after 2027. So, but we're connecting that and we're connecting it to the other um, universal chakras, which are, they're not, they don't belong to me. They don't belong to earth. They belong to the universe. And the universe is literally the ones that are sort of pulling the earth and humanity into an ascension kind of phase between 2023 and 27. And but we have to get these chakras, these chakras ready, which are connected to these uh, crystals that are plasma filled. Um, and, but we have to connect those to the portals to connect to the universe. And so that's what we're doing undercover work, right? Now. <laughs> but we will be bringing it into the consciousness uh, when we go to Peru in May. So yeah, I'm excited because I know for a while you were, you stayed hidden, you know, and I'm like, how do you not have all these people just rushing to you? And oh, I'm kind of staying hidden. So I remember I asked you last week, like, are you still hiding? And you're like, no, no more hiding. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that, that we can introduce you and bring you into the world for the rest of us to see. Um, what would you like to share with humanity? Like if you can, if you can tell humanity one thing or just kind of like one concept to kind of get it together, right? Like what would you say one can do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? Like what would be your overall advice to, um, to these people listening to you? Well, the most important thing is to connect to your soul. So do some soul gazing, go to the mirror and just look into your eyes and like pierce your soul, like ask it like deep, deep questions, like who am I? And, you know, what's my purpose? What's my real purpose here? Those kinds of things. The other thing is um, question everything. Like we should be these crazy mad scientists right now that are literally questioning everything because we can't actually ascend and move forward if we're just hanging out in the same old patterns right? Like that, it does not, that's not how growth works. That's not how expansion works. That's not how, that's not how we, um, as a human race, like we have to become these, these questioning kinds of beings that say, wait, how does this work? Or if I do this and that, how does that work? What kind what comes out of that? But we haven't been doing that for a really long time because we're so disconnected to our own soul self. Um, so those are the two most important things that we can do on a daily basis right now is like soul piercing and then asking questions, every kind of question. Yeah. And that was so different than every other teacher that I had, you know, been working with is kind of like, these are the steps or whatever. And you are so highly intuitive and innovative that even when like Peru always comes up where it was kind of like a scavenger hunt. And I remember you were kind of like, Oh my gosh. And I'm like, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So you're not like this book teacher that does, okay, we have to do this step. And that's like, we literally mm -hmm. were like moving around and you like investigate, okay, what's next? What's the download? Where are we going? Whatever. And we all kind of had to like, just be on our toes. And even though for some, it might've been like, Oh, we don't even know. Like you knew the whole idea, but at every moment, you had to become very innovative, very intuitive, very aligned with what your mission was. And you were so always focused on what that next message was. And the rest was just followed suit because, again, it did kind of just resonate with what we were doing and the work that they, we were there to do, like the portals, the activations that were taking place, um, the things that were happening, how you helped us embody the changes that were being made. Mm -hmm. And I remember that when we would have these retreats and, you know, sometimes you go to these retreats or, or like... I don't know, self-help, whatever. And you're like, rah, rah, rah. And your vibration is like super high. And then you come home and you're like, what happened? Like, it's all gone. And you always talk about the importance of like, yes, emotions are important, but embody what you're learning, make it a part of your DNA. So that literally changes your structure. And then what you're putting out is already the knowledge that you've received because we've done the work of healing. And that's what I love about how you you have mentioned, like we're, we're way showers, we're bridges, we're gonna help people get to where they're supposed to go. But I think a lot of people get caught up and they're supposed to be doing like extra stuff. And you were always like, heal yourself, Elia, heal yourself, focus on yourself. And, and sometimes a lot of empaths think like, oh my God, I'm an empath and I feel like whatever. Like, no, 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 no. You're an empath and because you are, you have the ability to do all these things. So you never let anybody make excuses. I love that you are blunt. I love that you don't mess around. And I love that you won't just take on anybody as a client. And I'm going to ask you in a few minutes like to, to describe your ideal client. What type of client do you want to manifest? Who, who do you want to even spend time with? Because I know that it's not about being particular, but 
sometimes you get yeah. tired. We get tired of helping people who aren't ready to help themselves. And you taught me that um, on a very deep level to, to stop, not so much wasting my energy, but pouring into people who aren't going to pour into themselves. And it took me a minute to kind of understand what that concept was without feeling the guilt. And then when you do feel the guilt, you help me process what that meant. And that's why I kind of want to put it out to people to say, hey, you know what? Yes, sometimes it can get confusing. Sometimes it's not pretty. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. But at the end of the day, what's on the other side is exactly what you need. Um, so the going through process is definitely very much worth it. So share with me who your ideal client would be, how you would like to work with these people. And even though we shouldn't have expectations and attachments, just kind of give me an idea of what that would even look like for somebody who would be working with you. Well, the ideal client would be someone like you, Velia, because you're, you've are you always been inquisitive. Like the first time I met you, like it's always been, wait, teach me more, teach me more, teach me more. And then it's always like, well, okay, I'll do the work, but then you're going to teach me more. And I'd be <laughs> like, absolutely, let's do, do the work and then we'll teach you more. You know, and it's like, the, it's always this inquisitiveness that you have and you're always growing and expanding in different ways. And that's, that's like, God, that's what humans are here for right like it's to grow and expand and like move and be real and to be honest and to be truthful like truth seekers are my ideal clients like people who only want to deal with the truth yeah, yeah. you I mean an amazing book that you wrote that I want you to share with people and you wrote it many many years ago and I remember I shared it with you I read it and like my whole body was vibrating from the words that I was reading and I want to say just tapping into the energy of that it's still very very much relevant for a lot of people today so can you share your book and then where we can get it because I want to make sure people have that reference that resource um I can't even remember the name of the book but <laughs> <laughs> um, how to remember your power through self-love and forgiveness it was literally a channeled book from archangel michael um, and i asked questions about how how we can learn to forgive ourselves because i don't think we're taught to forgive and the power of forgiveness self-forgiveness no it's we're not, i'm not talking about forgiving someone else in this book it's all about self-forgiveness and how you how you can that's probably the deepest way to heal yourself is to self forgive and to move into the depth of love. And I just posted something the other day that said something about love has no power without truth, um, which is a whole next level of this whole, where we're, where we're moving into. And it's, it's true. Like we think that love conquers all, but it doesn't because love is an emotion that's experienced and expressed in the third dimension and in the third dimension we have duality we have opposites and so love actually cannot conquer all if there's no truth behind it it can't conquer anything it can't heal anything oh wow that makes right? perfect sense when you break it down like that right even though it is powerful you're right the, you the belief systems and you've always been so 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 strong about belief systems what are you believing because your belief systems literally create your reality and the minute you start healing up those wounds, then your reality, your thoughts start changing. So you start creating a different world for yourself. Mm -hmm. I know that that has been the practice and has totally transformed me and my world. One thing I remember you saying that I think it's very important to mention uh, when we were at a retreat, abandonment came up, right? And you had mentioned, you know, we have, you know, it's not abandonment from somebody else. You know, you were teaching us, you abandon yourself to be here. And we're like, huh? Wait, what do you, what do you mean? And and so share a little more about that abandonment because I think that's super huge to have a freaking awareness of my goodness. Well, humans, ever since we decided to create this world of humanity, we've separated from the soul and the ego, right? Like those are the two things that have literally have separated. And the soul we think is in a, in a, some etheric place when it's actually just another part of us here someplace. Um, and, but we have the ego here. We're always in a state of grief. When you have a separation like that, where you literally separate your wholeness into two components, it's like the splitting of the atom. <laughs> and that's literally what happens. And when we have that, we're always in a state of grief. And we did abandon. I mean, you know, when we're separate separate ourselves like that, there is an abandonment. 
I mean, that's, you know, it's classical psychology. Abandonment is when we abandon a part of us, we're always trying to create something that will fulfill that, that loss. That's where the belief, belief systems came in, right? Like we started believing in something else that, that would sort of like either cover up or mask or we thought would fill in that loss, but it never actually did. Then we started creating emotions, you know, and we and we we created wars based on these things, on these belief systems that we think we're going to die for because, you know, that's it's the truth of who we are. But no, there there is no truth of who we are until we bring that soul and that ego back together and we become whole. Yeah. And I love how you have ways of teaching how to do that, because it all sounds fun and great. And it's like, how do I do it? Right. And- and getting caught up in the how to's is something that you kind of help uh, me pull away from. Just know what you want and everybody, your cosmic self and all your multidimensional people are going to come and just help you. And I had to believe you because <laughs> I'm like, but, but I don't understand, but like do it now. But I love how everything pretty much comes together when we start having the awareness of like, oh, you're just super sad to be here because you abandon yourself. And so that is the beginning of the picking apart of us trying yeah. to really figure ourselves out and how you teach, like just heal and do you and everything you need is already inside of you. And that was such a huge, huge thing for me to say, like, everything's inside of me. And you literally um, help excavate that. You help people excavate. You always, you also took us on a trip to excavate crystals um, a couple of years ago. And I'm like, hey, we're digging for crystals. And nobody had an idea. Nobody even knew what the hell we were doing um, as far as the power that was being literally excavated in, in each and every one of us. So um, you have these teaching moments and Angela is... Um, she has her degree in psychology, school counseling. I mean, she has degrees up the yin yang certifications, all that stuff. But I love that you don't ever like throw those out there because you're always like, what's next? That's yesterday. Like, okay, I have my degrees. Okay, what do I do today? What am I learning? And at first it's like, okay, we get bored easily. But no, like you're constantly looking to <clears throat> improve and find ways to teach and easier. And that teacher in you is amazing because you're forever always growing yourself. And I love the fact that, you know, that the, the more you grow, the more you can help expand, you know, consciousness and what you, you are here to do. So definitely an example of of where we should all be um, hoping to get to on a daily basis. Um, I know I wanted all your gifts at one point, and then I'm like, never mind. You know? <laughs> so like the, the, I mean, just, just to throw out a few of the things, like the, the reason why Angela is such a great mentor is because she's done so many things and kind of like grabs a little bit of everything that she's done and puts it into a more condensed way of learning. So like uh, mediumship, right? Like uh, your, please name all your titles. I had them written down, but that's, <laughs> and it's not so much like, oh my gosh, I have this, but she has all this bits and pieces where she kind of creates this custom plan for each and every one of us. So like, just share a little bit about your education with us please yeah so I basically have a master's degree in psychology and counseling um and I have Akashic records so I'm you know I I used to teach that I teach it every once in a while but um hypnosis that's I love hypnosis with the things that I'm doing now because it sort of um it's it sidesteps us and it makes us feel more safe I think in our exploration and I'm not into, you know, the, the uh, chemicals that can make us explore our minds. I'm more into hypnotic kind of states where, where you're safe, you remember absolutely everything and you don't have any hangovers from it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, so yeah, I just have, I don't know, I don't even know all my degrees, honestly, but for certificates because I have a ton of them. Um, so yeah, so what I've done is I've actually taken, um, components of each one of those areas and I sort of incorporate them and I, you know, it's not like you can't fit. I don't believe in, um, one size fits all, um, because it's not really true. I've never really experienced that myself. And so I, I try to create according to what the soul's plan is, um, and what the soul desires for this lifetime versus, you know, teaching all the things. Um, <clears throat> Cause you know, we could teach all the things, but then how useful is it? If you can't incorporate it and you can't remember it, like 
I think that's the piece, the component that I, I've learned myself is you have to remember how to do these things. Like you have to be able to be so comfortable in it. You can learn all the tools, but you have to be comfortable in it in order to be successful. Um, and so, you know, when we're doing healing components or doing healing, healing practices, which ultimately make you more whole, like you have to be able to remember how to do that. And what we're exploring right now with this whole portal thing is um, there are different things that are used in the cosmic field versus what humanity has used. I mean, even the past lifetimes of humanity, like Atlantis times or Lumerian times, you know, they use different kinds of tools, different kinds of technology, and you have to be able to remember that and then match the vibration of those so that you can actually use them. For sure. Again, why you have to be, why you have to do the inner work, right? Because I can't, I can't get you to match that. You have to do the inner work in order for that to, to actually work. Yeah, definitely a guide. And I mean, just the guidance of how, reminding us that we have to remember things. You're like, what do you mean? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, everything. So the more you heal, the more, the more layers are being pulled up, the more and more you remember. And, and like Angela yeah. said, she can't get you there, but she kind of like drops you in front of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I, can, can this. <laughs> I can pull you right up to the station, <laughs> but I can't make you go in the station. Yeah. <laughs> and when we remember, we feel comfortable in going into the station, right? And so, you know, there's that, I think that's that component that is, at least in my path, has been super helpful in being confident and being safe to explore. Love it. Love it. I love how you teach people how to feel safe because many don't even know what that feels like. So. Right. Super, super grateful. I know I've taken a bunch of your time today, but it's been amazing and so worth it, I'm sure, for all of us listening. So I will be posting all your links, um, your website, so people can get in contact with you. And uh, also, we're going to be hanging out once a month to just kind of, hey, this is what's happening. How is everybody? How can we help? How can we hear? How can we help or serve you? Um, but I love the whole like, you know, you're going to lead people, but it's up to them to do the work because some people, I mean, for uh, it might be for other people, but they can kind of handhold and Angela will not hold your hand. She's going to walk in front of you, on side of you and behind you, but she's going to let you do all the walking and will not hold your hand, literally. Mm -hmm because she is looking to empower you yeah. not to, you know, enable you. So thank you so much. I love you so much. We'll love be talking too. soon. And thank you for your amazingness. You're welcome. Thank you.